I love fairy tales because they're first read to us when we're little. And when we grow up, we can share these amazing stories again with our children. Fairy tales are classic, imaginative, and timeless. Hi kids, welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading the story of Jack-o-lantern. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Tricky Jack was known as the biggest prankster in town. He was always causing trouble, like drawing on the walls, jumping in the public pool, taking candy from the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate lollies. Wow, that is so mean. And tying people's shoes together. <laughs> I'm the trickiest trickster in town. He even once pants the mayor. And therefore, my fellow compatriots, in our time of being, we... <gasps> Sneaky little punk, Tricky Jack is the worst little trickster in the whole dang town. One day, Jack's antics caught the attention of a sneaky witch. Excuse me, what was it you just said about the trickiest person in town? Jack is the sneakiest little fellow there is, always pranking us and making us unhappy. <gasps> that can't be right. Everyone knows I'm the trickiest trickster in town. It's because I'm a witch. That's what we do. It's in the job description. And on that fall day on October 31st, the witch made a decision that will change Jack's life forever. I'm going to prove I'm the trickiest one there is. Jack can't beat me, I'm the tricky witch! Uh oh, this doesn't sound good. Later that day, Jack was walking on the trail back home when a mysterious figure approached him. Whoa, what's that? Hello Jack, I have to warn you about something important. The tricky witch has heard about your pranks and wants to prove that she is the trickiest one in town. Impossible, I'm the trickiest trickster there is. You may be in major trouble. So, I'm always in trouble. You don't understand. The tricky witch will stop at nothing to prove that she is the trickiest one there is. The only way you can be safe from her is if you stop pulling pranks on people. Only then will she leave you alone. No way, angel food cake. Playing tricks is what I do. You need to stop playing tricks on people. Nobody likes it. And the witch will never leave you alone until you behave. This is kind of spooky. Let her. I bet I'll bother her more than she bothers me. The angel could see that persuading Jack to be better wasn't going to work. Well, if you won't listen to my advice and behave yourself, there is one way to stop the witch, but it won't work for too long. Go on. It's autumn, and the one thing that the witch hates more than anything is the fall harvest. She especially hates root vegetables like pumpkin, squash, potatoes, turnips. She hates potatoes? You mean she doesn't even like french fries? Not one bit. She doesn't even like sweet potato fries. My point is, if you aren't going to be good, you can at least try and stop her with that. But she'll be back. Whatever. I'll be fine. I don't care if she tries to one-up me forever. I'll always be the trickiest guy there is. Well, just in case, I will give you this to ward off the witch, should she come our way. If she touches it, she will be banished from our world and won't be able to come back until next year. Cool, I'll take it. Ew, what's this? It's a turnip. You know, a gourd, a root vegetable, grows in the ground, sometimes put it on salads. Have you ever eaten anything healthy, ever? The only food I eat is candy, french fries, chocolate, and candy. Wow, that's a lot of junk. I bet it hurts your belly. Do you always have a stomach ache? Yes. <laughs> that was so funny. Anyway, use it to keep the witch away, but remember, she'll never truly leave you alone until you give up your prankster ways and become a good contributor to society. Save the spiel, Jack out. And so Jack left the angel and started going home. Just kidding, he pranked her first. Oh, I should have seen that coming. But after pranking the angel, Jack headed home. And once again, as Jack got close to his house, he noticed something else on the path in front of him. Hey, you pile of scrap, out of my way. Please, young man, can you help me up? Hmm, let me think about it. Psych. You just made a big mistake, young Jack, for it is I, the Tricky Witch. <laughs> 
What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Tricky Jack had just pranked the witch and she was not happy. You just made a big mistake, young Jack. Where is I, the tricky witch? <laughs> I've heard you think you're the trickiest lady in town. That I am. I'm the tricky witch. It's in my name. Oh, yeah? Well, what kind of tricks do you do? Lots of tricks. I can turn butter into mud. I can make another me. And I can turn tree frogs into regular frogs. That's nothing. I bet you can't even make candy appear out of thin air. Uh, of course I can. Wow, that is so cool. Hey, no fair. I didn't make that candy for you. Well, I'm the one that's eating it, so it's mine now. Hmm. You're trickier than I thought. Tell you what, let's do a challenge. At that moment, Jack remembered the angel's words. The witch will never leave you alone until you behave. But the chance to play tricks seemed too much fun, and Jack knew what he was going to do. A challenge, you're on. You say you like candy? Well, let's go around from house to house looking for some and see who can get the most. Whoever has the most wins. Oh, I'm sure I'll win this one. I'm good at taking candy, but how about we raise the stakes a little bit? Hmm. If I win, I get to keep all the candy you found. If you win, you get to keep all my candy. Sounds like a deal. Too slow. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Jack and the Tricky Witch walked to the center of town and got ready for the challenge. Whoever could collect the most candy from around town would win. Okay, let's begin. On your mark, get set. Hey, I didn't say go yet, you cheater. But Jack was already collecting as much candy as he could find. He found caramel sweets in an old lady's purse, took lollipops from little children, <laughs> and even went directly to the source, the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate sandwich cookies. Jack felt good about his work, but oh no, the witch had a plan to trick Jack and win the bet. The witch was using her magic to make more candy. She really was a tricky witch. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Tee there's no way I didn't win this challenge. <laughs> a little while later, the challenge was over and Jack met the tricky witch to count up. It was pretty clear who'd won. Ha! It looks like I win. I'm the trickiest one of all. Wow, you sure are. I guess a bet's a bet. Here, take all my candy. Oh, that was almost too easy. Go on, tricky witch. Count it up. Oh boy, I love rubbing salt in the wound. Yes, let's count up how much more candy I have now that I have yours too. One, two, three, four. Ah, a root vegetable. Ah, I'm disappearing. He had done it. Jack had tricked the witch. Take that bad guy, huh? And now you're banished. All of this candy is mine. I may be banished for now, but you'll bet I'll be back. Nobody tricks me and gets away with it. In one year, I will return and get revenge. Yeah, whatever. Revenge, revenge. Well, I'm glad that problem has gone away and will never bother me again. But just when Jack thought all his problems were solved, a familiar face appeared in front of him. The angel had returned. Phew, what do you want? I told you, Jack, the witch will be back and she will keep coming back again and again until she beats you. You cannot trick her forever. Yes, I can. Want to bet? No, we just went over this. Ugh, never mind. Anyway, beware. When her banishment ends in one year, she will be smarter and trickier than ever before. Well, so will I. That is not something to be proud of, Jack. If you keep playing tricks, you will never be free of her. She will bother you forever and ever. And if she wins, you will be her prisoner. Where would she take me? 
to where she came from, the realm of darkness, a world of ghosts and darkness and evil witches. So I'll just have to keep tricking her forever. That's fine by me. I'll never give up my tricky ways. You say that now, but I'm warning you, a life of trickery and rule breaking is one you will regret. Oh yeah? Wanna bet? No. I can't wait to see what happens next. Come back for the next chapter. Thanks for coming. Bye. Hi there. It's time for story time at Cool School. I'm Miss Booksy. Today we're reading the story of Jack o' Lantern. Chapter three. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. After Jack beat the witch's challenge, Jack was very pleased with himself. He had outsmarted an evil witch, and she wouldn't be back for another year, which for Jack felt like a long, long time. But while the next year passed and Jack continued to pull pranks on everyone he met, the angel watched over him. Look at me, I've learned nothing. And so Jack kept pulling his pranks. Soon fall turned into winter. Woohoo! And winter turned into spring. <laughs> My allergies! Does anybody have a tissue? I do! Did you pour pepper on this tissue? Yes, yes I did! Wow, that is so mean. And spring turned into summer. Protect yourself from the sun, buy my sunscreen! Your sunscreen doesn't work! My whole family is burned! Ha <laughs> I'm hilarious. And winter turned back into fall. Surprise! This is unpleasant. Soon it was October 31st yet again, exactly one year since Jack had last seen the Tricky Witch. Jack woke up and knew that the witch was going to be coming for him. Oh boy, October 31st, the day the witch comes back. I bet I'll trick her again. Uh-oh, you better watch out. Jack was a little nervous. What if the witch beat him? He was so anxious that he began walking around town looking for her. He looked everywhere. The fountain at the center of town. Young man, get out of there. That's where the ducks poo. I like it in here. The local graveyard. Even the mayor's office. Eek, the pencing boy. Get out of here, Jack, you little trickster. As the morning turned into late afternoon, Jack decided to go home. As he strolled past the town's pumpkin patch, he found another figure curled up in the road. Please, young man, can you help me up? Aha, it's the witch. No way, Jose. I didn't even fall for this the first time. Oh, gosh darn it. Hello, Jack, it's me, the tricky witch. I'm back and for my revenge. The witch? Oh, no. You sure can try. You may have tricked me last time, but this time I'll make sure you don't have anything you can use to banish me. Empty your pockets. Hmm, perhaps we should do a classic challenge scenario. How about a race? A race? I love racing. I'm the fastest person in the world. Well, I'm a witch. I can move super fast. Hmm, this road isn't very long. How about instead of racing on foot, Let's have a climbing contest. That way, I can keep an eye on you so you don't cheat. And same to you, you cheated last time. So did you, and I still won. Enough, a climbing race it shall be. What should we climb? How about the old patch tree? Whoever gets the top first wins. Deal. Oh, oh too, too slow. slow. Ooh, this is so exciting. As Jack and the witch wandered over the big tree, the angel appeared in the sky for Jack to see. Jack, this is your last chance. You don't have to challenge her. The only way to truly win is to leave her alone. Jack thought it over, but deep down, he already knew what he was going to do. Jack was a trickster through and through, and there was no way he was backing down from the witch's challenge. Don't worry, angel food cake. I got this. At the base of the tree, Jack and the witch prepared themselves for the climb. Okay, I'll count down. On your mark, get set, go! And so the tricky witch started climbing as fast as she could. She climbed higher and higher and higher. So high that she couldn't even see Jack. She couldn't believe it. It looked like she was winning. But where was Jack? He was running away? 
Oh, now I get it. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Jack ran as fast as he could to the pumpkin patch nearby and started picking all the pumpkins he could. Big pumpkins, tiny pumpkins, anything he could. Then he raced back to the tree and started placing the pumpkins at the bottom. Soon there was a whole field of pumpkins at the bottom of the tree. It didn't take long for the witch to realize that Jack hadn't followed her in the race. Hey, what's going on down there? Looks like you've won again. The witch slowly climbed back down the tree, but stayed at the bottom branch as the truth hit her. There was no way for her to get down without hitting one of the pumpkins. That is amazing. Oh, a root vegetable. No. What do you have to say for yourself, witch? Uh, darn it. There's no way for me to get down without being banished again. I have a new idea. What's that? You and I will make a deal. You will never bother me again for as long as I exist. You'll never take me to your home with darkness and ghosts and stuff. And what do I get in return? I'll move these pumpkins away so you can get down. The tricky witch considered Jack's words. Okay, deal. If you move the pumpkins, I will never be able to bother you and you'll never be allowed to enter the realm of darkness. Deal. You have no idea, do you? About what? Not every deal is as great as it seems. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Sure, whatever. Bye, witch. You'll never bother me again. And as promised, the witch never bothered Jack again. Jack lived the rest of his life pranking people, pulling tricks, and being a troublemaker. He did so until he was a very old man, living alone and friendless. And soon Jack's life was done. I'm ready to go to the next realm. I hope it's fun. But just then, the angel appeared in front of him. Hello, angel food cake. I'm ready for you to take me to my next life. I'm sorry, Jack, but I can't. What do you mean? You weren't a good person. You spent your whole life playing tricks on people. What? Your spirit will stay in this realm and for all of eternity, and you'll never be allowed to leave. Well, that's fine. I can still play pranks and stuff. Well, actually... Psych. You're a ghost, Jack. And in that moment, Jack realized the gravity of what he'd done. He had spent his whole life finding joy in hurting other people. And now, there were consequences. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. But, but I'll change. I'll be good, I'll do good deeds. It's too late. I gave you the chance to change your ways and do good deeds when you were young. But changing your mind just because you know there are consequences isn't enough. No one should be a good person because they have to be, but because they want to be. So well, what do I do now? I guess that's up to you. As the angel and the witch faded away, Jack was left to wonder about everything he did. Were all the tricks worth it? In exchange for a lifetime of fun, he now had to spend eternity trapped on Earth. This is what I get for not learning my lesson. And so Jack spent the rest of eternity wandering the streets watching. He's been known to prank other tricksters like he once was so that they may not make the same mistakes. Boo! <laughs> that was so funny. As time passed and Jack continued to haunt the town, his story was passed down from generation to generation. Everyone knew the story of Tricky Jack and how he was trapped on Earth forever. Afraid that he would haunt them, the townspeople treated October 31st as a special day to keep tricksters away. Families would put out candy so that children could enjoy sweets freely instead of taking them like Jack did. And they also put out pumpkins to keep the Tricky Witch away. The lit pumpkins were named Jack-o-lanterns in Jack's honor, like the lantern he held. This special day soon came to be known as Halloween, which we still celebrate today. Wow, that is so cool. What a great story. Hi, Princess Maggie here. As you know, I haven't always been an official princess, but I pretty much grew up in a palace. So I know a thing or two about royal life. Of course, you already know that palaces are big and pretty and full of fancy stuff, but there's a lot you don't know. But don't worry, I'm here to tell you everything you always wanted to know about hashtag castle life. <laughs> here are my top seven secrets about living in a palace. Let's start the countdown with secret number seven. They say there's nothing you can do to make a royal guard laugh. Hmm. Tough crowd. <laughs> but did you know there's one trick that always gets them? Got your nose. Give that back. Every time. 
Castle secret number six. Castles are the best for hide and seek. There are endless hiding spots. Towers, they'll never find me here. Ballrooms, dungeons, <laughs> and even the classic under the bed. Castle secret number five. There aren't really any alligators in the moat. <coughs> Those are just actually alligator pool floaties. The moat is basically like the lazy river ride at the water park. You just chill and float around. Castle secret number four. The throne is actually very uncomfortable. There's like zero cushioning and it's all lumpy, worse than a pee under your mattress. <laughs> Side note, those huge crowns the king and queen wear, also not so comfy. It's like trying to balance a birthday cake on your head. <laughs> and that brings me to secret number three. Those big crowns are the perfect hiding spot for snacks. Okay, castle secret number two. There are hidden tunnels everywhere. And some of them are like really long slides. And finally, castle secret number one, and my personal favorite, pretty much every castle has an official royal mascot. <laughs> Could be a dragon, or a unicorn, or a pug in a taco costume. <laughs> but whatever it is, count on it being the most super awesome royal buddy you could ever have. <laughs> Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Princess and the Pea. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was a prince named Henry, but everyone called him Hank. Prince Hank was going to be king one day, but first he had to get married. Why do I have to get married? And you have to marry a princess. No substitutes allowed. That was Prince Hank's mother, the queen. It was time for princess interviews. This was where princesses from near and far would come to the palace and meet the prince, hoping to become the next queen. Hey. Hi. You didn't curtsy. Next. Make sure you curtsy. Nope. Next. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Oh, hello, princess. And what kingdom do you hail from? Oh, I'm not a princess. I work here, remember? <laughs> Prince Hank did not remember. This was Miss Maggie, who had come to the palace to work for the queen. She had been there for ages, but Prince Hank was a little bit self-absorbed. That means he liked himself a lot and didn't care about or notice much else. You work here? What does that mean? Prince Hank was also not very familiar with work. He was a bit what we would call spoiled rotten. I'm a lady in waiting to the queen. Waiting? What are you waiting for? The bus? Lady in waiting means I wait on or serve the queen, kind of like an assistant. So you're not actually waiting for anything? No. And you're not here to try and marry me? Definitely not. The queen sent me to see if you needed anything. I suppose you could help me if any of these bootleg princesses try to get fresh. Very well. Next. Nope. Next. Wow, that is so mean. This went on for hours. To be or not to be, that is the question. I have the answer. Next. Oh. Oh, brother, no! As soon as a princess would enter the room, Prince Hank would send them away. Why don't you just talk to any of these princesses? You know, try to get to know them. They might be great. You're being, I hate to say it, a little bit rude, dude. Look, baggy. Maggie. Whatever. I can't waste my time with girls who aren't queen material. The next queen has to be the real deal. Genuine, bona fide, 100% R-O-Y-U-L-L. -L. That spells royal. No, it doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, these so-called princesses are totally bleh, and I'm bored, so I'm gonna go take a nap. Wait, I, I think there's one more girl. Ugh, fine. Next. Oh, hello. That princess is so beautiful. You look familiar. You remind me of someone I like. Prince Hank liked this princess immediately and invited her to stay at the castle. He was smitten, but soon it was clear they actually had a lot in common. I can't wait to see what happens next. She was very picky. Ew, next. She was very into herself. And she was not very polite. Somebody smells like cheese. Not me, I smell good. 
After dinner, everyone went down to the parlor for the evening's entertainment. In an effort to impress the princess, Prince Hank sang a song. I live in a castle, I wear a crown. It's so shiny, it's so awesome. Your turn, princess. Play us a song. Yeah, true love is great and love is not. Then I met my prince. La, 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 la. Wait, no, you need to go higher. Now it's like this. That was hilarious. Okay, I'm bored now. Where's my bed? That's when the queen leaned over to Maggie and whispered, This is how we'll tell if she's a real princess. The plan was to place one tiny green pea under the mattress in the guest bedroom. You see, supposedly a real princess would be so sensitive, she would feel the teeny tiny lump and not be able to sleep a wink. Maggie thought it was a little silly, but she followed the queen's orders. <laughs> okay, your bed's ready, princess. Finally, I'm exhausted. Well, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Ew, gross. Oh, sorry, it's just an expression. <laughs> Good night. What do you think will happen next? Chapter two, here we go. The next morning, Maggie and the Queen eagerly waited for the princess to join them for breakfast. Did their test work? Had she felt the pee? Finally, the princess came down. Good morning, princess. But before they could ask how she slept, the princess said, Oh my gosh, there was a giant lump in the middle of my mattress. I couldn't sleep at all. Oh really? Well, we'll have that taken care of at once. Maggie! On it, ma'am. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Maggie lugged a new mattress all the way up the stairs and plopped it on the bed. Ah, Surely she won't feel the pee under two mattresses. But the next morning played out the same. Ah, I couldn't sleep a wink. I could still feel this gigantic pokey lump. So Maggie pulled another mattress up the stairs and put it on the bed. Ah, okay. Maybe she could feel the pee with two mattresses, but good luck feeling it with three. <laughs> but you guessed it, the princess once again came down to breakfast, rubbing her eyes and yawning. And once again, Maggie was struggling to get yet another mattress up to the guest room and on top of a now very high bed. And this happened again and again and again and again. Wow, it's so colorful. Finally, Maggie asked the queen, Your Highness, isn't it obvious that the princess is a real princess? She felt the pee every single night, no matter how many mattresses I put on her bed. This is a very serious thing, Maggie. Do you know how many fake princesses there are out there? No. It's a real problem. Whatever you say, Your Highness. Oh, here she comes. Let me guess, you didn't sleep a wink? Oh, how many does it take? A million? A million mattresses? I'll be dragging around mattresses until I'm an old lady. Hey, Maggie. Prince James. Prince James was Hank's twin brother. He was born four minutes after Hank, and being the younger twin, he would never be king, but he didn't mind. He was totally cool with just being a regular guy. Well, he was still a prince, but he was very laid back. Pretty much the opposite of Hank. That prince is so handsome. Maggie and James had known each other for quite some time and liked each other a lot. They liked to do not so royal things together, like fill up the palace pool with slime, eat ice cream sundaes till their tummies hurt, and sneak into the kitchen to mess with the royal chef's menu. Goose liver pate? No thanks. Let's just change it to pizza. Extra cheese! Ooh, add pineapple! Yep, they were partners in crime. Oh, uh, what you up to? The princess peach ass. The what? Prince Hank can only marry a true royal, and the queen wanted me to make sure that this girl's a real princess, so I put a pee under her mattress. Oh, yeah, I still don't get it. Well, apparently princesses have a super high sensitivity and can feel something as small as a tiny pee under their mattress. And sure enough, this princess has felt it every single night for like two whole weeks. So I just keep stacking mattresses, but she keeps complaining about the pee. Maybe she just likes to complain? That's a possibility. Hey, I have an idea. Let's take the pee out and see if she still says her mattress is lumpy. Ugh, scandalous. Let's do it. 
Wow, this is so fun. You almost got it. Just a little more. Okay, I see it. Get it, get it. Wow, I can't believe you lugged all those mattresses up there. I'm pretty strong. So, what now? We wait and see how the princess sleeps. It seemed like forever until the princess's bedtime. I win! No way! I always win! Mother always lets me win! You're playing the game wrong. Well, my mother always lets me win, so you're playing it wrong. Wanna play again? No, I'm gonna go to bed. Gee, I really hope I can sleep tonight. That bed is so lumpy. Anyway, good night, everybody! Good night, my love. Here comes the moment of truth. The next morning, Prince James and Maggie waited for the princess, eagerly awaiting her report. Here she comes. But instead of appearing well rested, the princess looked like she hadn't slept at all. The pee was gone, but the princess said, OMG, I literally tossed and turned all night long. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Really? Yeah, it's like there's this lump right in the middle of the bed. I'm very sensitive to these things, you know, being a princess and all. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Maggie and James were totally confused. I don't get it. We removed the pee, but she says she still felt the lump. She must be making it up, but why would she randomly lie about something like that? I got it. She knows about the princess and the pee test. So she's faking it to seem like a real princess. Yeah, at least I think so. So if she's not a princess, who is she? I don't know, but we have to find out. How can we do that? We spy. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh this is so exciting. James and Maggie both loved a good caper. They excitedly prepared for their super secret spy mission. Okay, do we have everything we need? Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry. Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first rule of spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. <whistles> right, got it. Let's go. wait for her to reveal her true self. What do you think is gonna happen next? But the princess wasn't up to anything unusual. She did her nails, she read a magazine, she brushed her hair, she washed her face, you know, totally normal stuff. Wait, what? Uh -huh. What? No, that can't be. Ah, she's coming this way. So she's a witch. Major plot twist, but why the princess act? We have to get to the bottom of this. Maggie and James didn't have flying broomsticks, so they couldn't follow the princess, uh, witch, wherever she was going. So they just had to wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. The witch finally came back just before dawn. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. James and Maggie watched as she emptied out a small bag. What's all that stuff? Wait, shh, listen. Okay, the recipe calls for the eye of a rattlesnake, the whiskers of a catfish, three mouse tails, one ounce of kangaroo sweat. Ew. She's casting a spell. And a lock of stallion hair. Now just stir and voila, the magic potion is ready to serve. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. So that's why Hank likes her so much. She's been feeding him love potions. Not on my watch. Let's go stop her. James and Maggie ran to breakfast to thwart whatever wicked plan the witch had cooked up. Okay, so what's our plan? Okay, when she gets down here... Good morning, princess, my love. Ah, she's here! What do we do? Wash her face! Hey, what the heck are you doing? 
James, stop washing my girlfriend. She's a witch. She's got green under there, and she has a pointy hat, and she flies around on a broomstick, and she cooked up a love potion to make you love her. She's not a real princess at all. She totally pretended to feel the pee under her mattress, but it was all a ruse. She's a witch, I tell ya. The witch? Oh, no. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, good. Apologize to the princess at once. Didn't you hear what I just said? Your girlfriend's a witch. It's no use, guys. He can't hear anything bad about me. He's in love. Can't you see? The spell is too powerful. That's right. And now you'll love me too. <coughs> oh no, the potion. Now we're going to, we're going to, to, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, really? Oh, hi, princess. You look so beautiful this morning. Ah, why, thank you, James. James, James, you're under her spell. Can't you see? You're a pretty princess. Ah, what do I do now? How are they ever going to get out of this one? Chapter four, here we go. This is terrible. Both princes are under the spell of the witch. Wait, why am I not under the spell? I breathed in the love potion, too. Relax, it only works on princes. It's a very specific spell. Oh, but why? What are you trying to do? Well, I was trying to marry Prince Hank, but now I guess I have my choice, don't I? Maybe I'll marry Prince James. No! No? Ah, uh, does someone have a crush? Prince James and, what's your name again? Maggie. Maggie, sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Shush! First comes love, then comes marriage. Oh, wait, not if I marry him. I can't hear you, la 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 la. Wow, that is so mean. Okay, I have to figure out how to defeat the witch and break the spell. All right, how do you destroy witches? Water! Yeah, I'll just dump a bucket of water on her like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. That won't work. And if you mess up my makeup, I will conjure up a curse. So bad. A curse? Oh no. Okay, fine. Ugh, think, Maggie. Oh, Dorothy also crushed a witch with her house. That's your plan? You're gonna smush me with a house? Yeah, I guess not. Ooh, Hansel and Gretel pushed their witch into an oven. No thanks. Face it, Muggy. Maggie. Whatever. Face it, Maggie. I'm going to marry the prince. And you can't stop me. Why do you even want to marry the prince anyway? Aren't we just supposed to marry like wizards or ogres or something? Seriously? What? You don't think witches grow up reading fairy tales too? They do? Yes. And all my life, deep down, I've known that I'm really supposed to be a princess. So when I heard there was a real prince looking for a princess, well, I put on my dress and I hightailed it over here. Ooh, that makes sense. Don't you think it's a little messed up that you used the love potion on Hank? I wanted him to like me. Honestly, I think you guys have a lot in common. I think he'd like you anyways. Really? You think so? Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I think James likes you too, by the way. Really? I mean, yeah. I guess he's pretty cool. I was only kidding when I said that I might marry him. It doesn't matter. I'm not a princess. I don't know if you noticed, but I wear the same dress literally every single day. Well, except today. These are my spy clothes. Wait, I just got a great idea. Let's do a princess makeover! Fun! Aw, that's so sweet. Their princess makeover party was so much fun. The girls barely noticed that they were totally bonding. Could they really become friends? They sure looked like besties. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you do know this doesn't technically make me a princess, right? Who cares? If you feel like a princess, you're a princess. End of story. Now let's go get Hank and James and go have some fun. <laughs> princess, my love. No, she's my love. Um, I think you have to break the spell first. All oh, right. Do you have any lizard tails or grasshopper belly buttons? Uh, not on me. Well, that was weird. I'll just try a chant. All right, let's see. This should work. Loveth spell brachioso. What happened? I feel weird. Hey, Maggie, cool dress. <laughs> this whole thing? 
Okay, I got an idea. Let's go play mini golf and get some ice cream. Great idea. OMG, I love it. So the four went out on a double date and had a blast. The princess witch was nervous to reveal her true identity to Prince Hank, but he thought it was pretty cool. Ice creamyosa magicus flyeth into my mouth. -es. That is amazing! This is seriously so much cooler than being royalty. It took a little convincing for the queen to come around, but she realized that having a royal family member with magical powers could come quite in handy. But most importantly, she saw how happy the princess witch and Hank were. The queen did have one question though. So did you really feel the pee under all those mattresses? No, I read about that in a fairy tale once, so I thought it was worth a shot. The queen also approved the match between James and Maggie. They were obviously perfect for each other. Yay! So the story ends with the happiest of fairy tale endings. Not just one true love, but two. And a couple of girls who grew up loving fairy tales became real princesses. Pretty cool. Oh, happily ever after. What's Neverland? Why, Neverland is only the most amazing place in the whole universe. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Peter Pan. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Pan, Peter Pan. I have so much cool stuff to show you guys, but first I wanna tell you about a very special family, the Darling family. And there was a huge battle. You'll never catch me. Oh yeah, watch me. And Peter Pan was so quick, flying through the air like a little white bird. Yep, they're talking about me. Every night, Mrs. Darling tells bedtime stories about me and all my buddies. And my favorite thing to do is listen outside the window. Soaring through the air with Tinkerbell. I love this part. Um, look, pirates. Whoa, yeah, there they are, quick. Ooh, this is so exciting. Hey, you stinky old pirates. Oh man, not this kid again. Put your dukes up, Starkey. Okay. Where's your leader? You mean Captain Hook? Arr. And then... I, I want to fly, fly like Peter, Peter Pan. Pan. Hey, Mom. I can fly. Watch me. <laughs> Ouch. Is it weird I like to listen to stories about myself? All right, all right, kids. I think it's about time for bed. Nana! Yep, their babysitter is a dog. I'm telling you, the craziness is only getting started. Sure. And she speaks. <laughs> hmm, that's weird. I could have sworn I heard something out there. <sighs> That was a close one. They're all set for bed, Mrs. Darling. I've looked high and low for my phone, you guys. Um, I don't have it. My girl? Sorry, Dad. It was our buried treasure. Huh? You know, like in the story of Peter Pan. Peter Pan? Oh, Dad, Peter Pan? Oh, that silly kid. Hey, rude. All right, everyone to bed. Especially you, Wendy. You have a big math test tomorrow. Ugh, growing up is hard. Don't do it. Don't grow up. We, we won't. Night-night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mom. You closed the window? Uh, yeah. It's freezing. But Peter Pan <sighs> might come to the window. Huh? To visit. <laughs> oh, Wendy, dear. Peter Pan is just a story. Peter is not real. Ha! That's what she thinks. Wow, this is so fun. But one night, I was listening to stories, minding my own beeswax. The kids were doing their bedtime routine. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So one night, the kids were doing their bedtime routine. Story, bath, 
brush your teeth, bed. You know, the huge. Me and my shadow were chilling outside. Oh, BT Dubs, that's my shadow. She comes with me everywhere I go. Right, Shadow? <laughs> what, what is that smell? <laughs> Smells like cinnamon buns? John, ew! Oh, I was saving that for later. <laughs> OMG, that's so gross. <laughs> that was so funny. Is it me? I, I swear I showered. Ooh, not sure. Yesterday? No. Yes. Today? No. It was definitely yesterday. A possible intruder! But Nana, I'm telling you, there's nothing out- Peter Pan? I hope they'll be okay. Gotcha! What the? I can't believe it. You're real. I'm sorry, Shadow. I gotta get out of here. I'll come back for you. Uh, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. That was not good. What am I gonna- Gonna what? Tank, don't sneak up on me like that. Sorry, boss. And I told you, you don't need to call me boss. Oh, sorry, Bob. Um, boo thing. Ah, Tank, I lost my shadow. The darlings totally trapped me, and now they have it. What are they gonna do with it? Oh, no. Well, we should go get it back. Yeah, you're right. But we gotta wait until they go to sleep. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Meanwhile, back at the darlings. I can't believe it. She's really real. I knew it and her shadow detached from her body. Scientifically, that is a conundrum. Well, this is certainly more exciting than our regular bedtime routine. We should put her shadow in the drawer for safekeeping. I'll help. Oh goodness. In you go. Operation Shadow Rescue on a dark cold night. Little long winded there, Pan. Right, Operation Shadow underway. Gonna need a shovel. Really? A battery pack. Um. A grapple. What is that? This kayak. Seems a little excessive. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's go get that shadow. Yay, magic to the rescue. Okay, I'm gonna crack open the door and since you're tiny, you fly in and try to find my shadow. Awesome, p and on three. One, two. Huh? Oh, huh. I was thinking we could start a team cheer. No time, go. Hmm, no, nope, not under there. What about here? No. OMG, Peter, here! Oh, my shadow! Hey, I'm in here! Oh, I missed ah. you, you little cute hey. shadow, you! Ah. Hey! Ah. Oh, oh my. Ah. What is going on? Glitter in this pouch, and I'm not afraid to use it. Oh no, I hope she's okay. Peter, I knew you'd come back. Oh, um, hello, my name is P. Uh, well, I guess you know my name since you just said it. <laughs> uh, I get nervous making new friends. Oh, Peter, let me help you with that. Gee, I, uh, I'm not used to having someone take care of me like this. Really? What about your mom? Her, well, I live in Neverland, and there are fairies and mermaids and pirates, but my parents work a lot, so I don't get to see them very much. Oh, that must be so hard. Yeah, but you seem like such a good mother. Well, I'm not exactly a mother. Oh, I have a great idea. What about being a Cub Scout mom? Are you kidding me? Sorry, I'm so confused. Well, in Neverland, I'm the Cub Master for a whole group of Cub Scouts. We'd love to have someone like you in our troop. So what do you say? Want to come to Neverland with me? I can't wait to see what happens next. Peter Pan, chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So what do you say? Want to come to Neverland with me? Oh my, that's, that's, a, that's a big decision. What about my home and my brothers and my math test tomorrow? What's a math test? You know, addition, 
Subtraction? Multiplication? Radical expression? Uh, the only radical expressions I know are like, yeah, serves up, bro, radical man, totally, dude. <laughs> that was hilarious. Look, Peter, I can't just leave my brothers. They can come with. Hey, little dudes, wake up, rise and shine. I'm awake. Hiya! Whoa, you're ready for action, little guy. <laughs> what, what? What's happening? Is that you, Peter? Yep. So me and your big sis are headed to Neverland. You coming? Yes. Oh, I, uh, boys, I, I don't know. We should think about this. Miss Wendy, I promise I'll keep you guys safe. Let's just all go have an adventure together, and I'll get you back here in time for your muffin test. Math test. Whatever. Let's go. Ooh, this is so exciting. Um, Peter? Oh, I almost forgot. Just close your eyes and think of your favorite candy and your favorite song. La, la, la. Michael, shush. And fly. Um, Peter. Not now, Tink. I'm working over here. <laughs> that was so funny. Peter. Tink, I swear I can't think when you keep saying my name. Peter! <laughs> um, right. Thanks, Tink. Fairy glitter. Tinkerbell, hit him with your best shot. Sure, boss. Oh, my. I've always wanted to fly. From a physics standpoint, this seems impossible. But I like it. You guys are doing great. Keep your spirits up and your eyes on me. Let's go to Neverland. And Tink, keep a steady stream of fairy glitter, too. You got it. As the new friends flew from their house through the sky to Neverland, they encountered some amazing things in the sky. Hey, look! A flying metal tube! You mean an airplane? <laughs> okay, Wendy. Nobody calls it that. Um, literally everyone calls it an airplane, Peter. Whatever, let's grab onto the wings and go for a ride. Wow, this is so fun. Wee! Uh oh. Oh boy, maybe we should try something else. Everybody, jump! Whoa, I'm floating! You don't even need fairy glitter here. Ooh, is that the moon? My research indicates that the moon is made of cheese. Only one way to find out. Oh, Peter, you wouldn't. <laughs> Watch me. Hmm, tastes like chicken. Cheesy chicken. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. Meanwhile, things on the pirate ship were getting a little wild. Okay, 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 you bunch of ragamuffins. Listen up. Or what? Ah, Starkey, I can't deal with you being snarky. Sit down. Ah, uh, sorry, Smee. I'll clean that up right away. Listen, Captain Hook has had a really bad day. What else is new, Mr. Sticky Attitude Hook? Anyways, he lost his special glove that he wears over his hook to sword fight and, and other piratey things. Yar, I heard Hook crying all night long. Shh, Bob, don't say his name. We don't want to wake him up. He was taking his afternoon nap. Arr, who dared utter my name? This doesn't look good. Uh-oh. Bill Jukes. Yes, sir. Was it me, sir? Get me my tablet. Yes, sir. Now, where is Pan? Last we tracked her, she was at Mermaid Lagoon. Do, do you think Pan stole your glove? Of course I think Peter Pan stole me glove. She's always up to mischief, that one. Brr. Peter Pan's impossible to track. Do you want someone to walk the plank to make you feel better? Oh. Hmm, Bob. Oh, please, sir, not again. Just kidding. Phew. Maybe tomorrow. Oh. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. 
Wiggle, snap, story time. So the pirates were discussing how to track down Peter Pan, but Peter Pan and his new friends were still living their best life with their newfound flying superpower. Hey, they wouldn't be flying without me. We're almost there, you guys. Neverland. Oh my, I never thought I'd see one up close. You mean a white feathered yellow hooked bill floater? Um, a bald eagle? <laughs> you guys are always making up names for stuff. Airplane, bald eagle. <laughs> that was hilarious. I thought you were all going extinct. Squawk. Are we getting close, Peter? Yep. Look, I see our bunker. Wow, Neverland, here we come. Well, here we are. It's our home under the ground, AKA a fortress me and the Cub Scouts built together. And I helped. <laughs> yep. Okay, let me give you a tour. Well, here's the chemistry lab. They call me twin one. And I'm twin two. Oops, sorry. Don't worry. We were just making some magic potion. Whew, that was a close one. That one will make you have hiccups. Uh-oh. Hey, Wendy, check this out. This is Nibs. I'm trying to get my cooking merit badge. I've been working on this candy recipe for weeks. Mmm. What is this stuff? It's called slime, my good sir. I'm Toodles. Cool. Hey, Pan, you know I'm trying to get my woodworking merit badge. Think fast. Whoa, Curly, you nearly knocked me out there. <laughs> I'm okay though, I think. That's gotta hurt. Aren't you gonna introduce your new friends, Pan? Oh, how rude of me. Guys, these are the Darling children. Darlings, this is my Cub Scout troop. Troop number LB123. But while the new friends were exchanging pleasantries, Captain Hook and his pirates were continuing their plan to hunt down Peter Pan. You know, she's always hanging with those mermaids. But sometimes with that green peace club. Arr, if only my internet connection was better. I need better Wi-Fi. S sir I think I have an idea. No, I have a better idea. Why must everything end in a sword fight with you hooligans? Who you calling a hooligan? Arr, you kidding me? This bickering went on for a while, but back at the home under the ground, Peter revealed the special news that I hereby declare that this lassie, Wendy Darling, is our new den mother. That is amazing. I still can't believe this. Peter knows her for one day and she already gets den mother. Well, welcome mother. Maybe you can help me learn to cook better. We're, We're happy, happy to have you. you. Um, thank you. Not quite sure what I'll be doing as Den Mother, but I'm excited. Well, I'd love to paint a portrait of you. Oh, um, well, my first order of business. Yeah? I want us all to go on a hike to discover more of Neverland. Ooh, I don't know, Wendy. You might see things, big things, scary things, dark things, wonderful things, curious things, things you can never unsee. Whoa, this place is crazy. I'm not scared. Come on, Pan. You know we've been trying to get our hiking merit badge. That is true. Oh, please, Peter. I really want to see all the things we've heard about in the storybooks. All right, all right. First up, let's go to Mermaid Lagoon. Yeah! We're getting close. Mermaids are near. Couple more paces this way. My feet are getting tired. I remember in our lab, we've used this special berry to make medicine. Yeah, just rub it on your toesies and they'll feel much better. Oh, sounds kind of weird. Michael, this is Neverland. There's no such thing as weird, just magic. Give it a try. I feel brand new! Watch this! Oh, from up here, I can see that just over this hill is the lagoon! Let's go! And as the group came over the hill, they were astonished at the beauty that was in front of them. That's 
so magical. I can't wait to see what happens next. Peter Pan, chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Everyone was stunned by the beauty of the Mermaid Lagoon. Why, I've never seen anything quite like this before. I hear them singing. Watch that one over there. She's on the national flipping team. Wow, they swim so fast. Wow, that is so cool. You think that's fast? Watch this. Ah, oh, Peter. We missed you, Peter. Where have you been? Oh, I've just been out making new friends, wheeling and dealing. Silly girl. Whoa there. I can have lots of friends at once. Well, I know your BFF Tank should be around here somewhere. Tank? Tank? Hey, ladies. You're giving Peter a hard time. <coughs> yes. Well, we're just joking. Here, catch. Uh-huh. You mermaids ready for a rematch? Last time, Peter and I kicked your booties in this game. Oh, yeah. Game on. Ooh, this is so exciting. Back at the ship, Captain Hook and the pirates came up with a scheme to find Pan. Arr, I say we go to the Green Peace Club yeah! and kidnap their leader, Tiger Lily. Yeah! She's friends with Pan. We'll use Tiger Lily to lure Peter Pan to us. <laughs> yeah! Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. It was true. Peter Pan and Tiger Lily were really good friends. Tiger Lily was a park ranger and the leader of the Green Peace Club. They were a group of environmentalists, which pretty much means they lived off the land and tried to protect Mother Earth. There's Tiger Lily now. Oh, I just love squash. This butternut is going to be delightful. Hey, boss. Hey, Tiger Lily. We heard there's some new peeps afoot in Neverland. Cool. New friends. Well, we don't know that yet. Yeah, with your permission, we want to go check them out. Make sure they aren't a threat to the environment. Sure, but be back soon. I'll make you herbal tea. Okay. okay. Now, Smee, follow my lead. Okay, Captain. We're going to pretend to be farmers. Put on this hat. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Why, Captain? Arr, no time to explain. Just follow me. Do da do da do, I love plants, la 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 la, and trees. Do da do, I love the sun. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, farmer. I'm sorry, I don't think we've been acquainted. We haven't. What my colleague is trying to say is that we are new farmers here. Hmm, I usually know about all the activity here at Greenpeace Club. Uh, uh, uh. And what happened to your hand? Uh-oh. And why must you ask so many questions, girl? This is not gonna be good. I think you need to leave. I'm not leaving until you tell me where Pan is. Ah! Watch out! Captain Hook, I knew it! Tell me where Pan is or you'll walk the plank. Let me go, I'm a pacifist. I don't like to fight. But while Tiger Lily was fighting for her life, the mermaids noticed the onlookers at their game. Hey, look, invaders! Be gone, you strangers! Splash them! Hey, stop it! Girls, girls, quit it! We don't want any interlopers here. That's so not cool. <coughs> we mean no harm. Everyone, stop! This is your last chance, Tiger Lily. No way! It's Captain Hook! And Tiger Lily! Oh no! He must have captured her! We gotta save her! Okay, Wendy, you stay with the den. But I want to come with you, Peter. I can help! Okay, fine. Wendy, you come with me. Scouts, you take the darling boys back to the bunker. And mermaids, chill out. These are my friends. Tink, let's go. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Peter Pan, Wendy, and Tink flew quick as a flash towards Captain Hook and Tiger Lily. I hope we make it in time. Almost there. This would be a lot easier if you would just tell me where Pan is. Oh no, 
I hope they'll be okay. I'm a loyal friend and I won't give her to you. Aw, oh, come on. Sorry, BFF code of honor. Arr, it's very important that I find Pan. She has something of mine. Like what? Your sense of decency? A fly would never hurt. But Pan? Ugh, oh, Peter Pan, I'll squash her like a fly. You're so rough, dude. You have no idea. Who hurt your feelings so bad that you're this way, Hook? Well, it was this one time when I was little and... Hey, stop trying to understand me. I'm a mean pirate. That's that. Well, that was weird. I don't believe that. There must be a good guy under there. I'm not so sure. We all belong to this planet and Mother Earth is love. Stop it with this nonsense. I'm bad and you're whatever. And Pan is toast. Let's go. Peter, you have to do something. Tink, we got this. I promise, Tiger Lily, you're going to love walking the plank. Not if I can help it. What? Who said that? Over here. Who? What? Where? Oh, Captain Hook! Huh? Look! Right over there! <laughs> you just got fairy glittered, man! Yay! I'm so happy! <coughs> what in the world? Um, Captain? Oh no you don't, you stinking pirate! You're not getting away that easily! I knew you'd come, Pan! Of course! BFF Code of Honor! Quick. <laughs> well, my plan worked. All I wanted was to find. You. Hey, well, what's happening? Fairy glitter. Come on, Peter. What is this? This witchcraft? Well, only enough magic in there to make you float for like five minutes. By then, we'll be long gone. <laughs> oh, thank the goddess. Sorry to leave you hanging. <laughs> Get it? Hanging, floating. <laughs> that was so funny. Tink, come on. No time for jokes. Peace out, dudes. <laughs> Meanwhile, the scouts and darling boys had been on their way back to the bunker. Not too much longer, boys. Just a smidge more walking. My calculations tell me we should head due north. Have you had that compass this whole time? Why, yes. I never leave home without it. And my calculations tell me it's snack o'clock. Finally. Yeah, my belly is a rumbling for some treats. Nibs, what do you got? Well, I have been so excited to have you guys taste test these candies. We love candy. I do say, this looks splendid. It's filled with chocolate and sprinkles and butterscotch and sour gummies and sugar snap peas and covered in powdered sugar. OMG, I love it. Sounds interesting. Tastes interesting. While we rest our weary bodies, we should play a game of charades. Yay! We'll, we'll go, go first. Three words. Um, Santa Claus? No. First word. Measuring out flour for a cake? No. Scooping sauce onto pasta? No. Squeezing glue to make slime? Come on, man. Isn't it obvious? No. no. We're carving a pumpkin! Oh! Ooh, that makes sense. Uh, I think I ate too much. My tum-tum. Well, we should probably get back before it gets too dark. Yeah, let's go! One little problem. The members of the Green Peace Club were hot on their trail. Remember they were looking for the new people they heard about in Neverland? Well, let's just say the Darling Boys didn't make a great first impression. <gasps> Trash! You mean littering. We have to find who did this. And bring them to Tiger Lily. Man, oh man, she's not going to be happy about this. Earth vandalizers on our island? No bueno. Let's get them. How are they ever going to get out of this one? Chapter 7, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So the members of the Green Peace Club were relentlessly looking for the Earth Vandalizers, aka the Scouts and Darling Boys who left trash behind in the woods. That's a big no-no. Plastic? I can smell it! 
Yep, this way. That was a really fun game of charades. Yeah, but how could you not guess carving a pumpkin? So easy. Twas not. Was too. Sorry, twins. It was pretty tricky. Shh, quiet. Shh, did you hear that? Uh-oh, they better watch out. I don't hear anything. Shh. What is it, John? Not sure yet. I hear rustling. It's probably just a deer. Or a pirate. What? what? Mm, no, those steps are heavier than a deer. But lighter than an elephant. There aren't elephants in the woods. It's Neverland. You want to bet? Shh. Stop arguing before something bad. <laughs> Gotcha! What do what? Let us out of here! This is unacceptable! We come in kindness. Um, you literally trapped us. How is that kind? Well, we don't know what kind of vagrants are roaming this island. It's our mission to keep this a peaceful place and the land pure. This is all very harmonious, but can you let us out of here? We'll let you out, but you have to come with us. What? Why? Oh, JK. You scouts are good, we know you. Yay! Yay, I'm so happy. But you boys need to come with us. No! Sorry, they violated the Neverland Environmental Law 26.2. Never ever litter in Neverland. Well, how do you know it was us? Come on, man. Uh, what, who, uh, me? Ugh, Michael. Well, we aren't leaving without our new friends. Yeah, you either take none of us or all of us. Uh, okay, fine. Everyone line up. Oh, that didn't quite go how I thought it would. Wait, I have a better idea. We can run back to the bunker and get Peter. Yes, she'll know what to do. Yeah. Oh, um, okay, fine. Go ahead, take them. Yeah, we def won't be going to, uh, get help or anything. What? Don't worry, we have a plan. Okay, whatever. You two, let's go. John, this is very bad. Where's Wendy? You're coming with us to our headquarters. No, I hope they'll be okay. But what everyone didn't know was that Peter was on her way to the Greenpeace Club with Tiger Lily. John, I'm scared. I know, I am too. But I'm sure that Wendy and Peter will figure out a way to save us. Thanks for your help back there, Pan. Of course. <laughs> I just knew you'd come. You bet. We'll make sure you get back to the club safely. Come on, little dudes. You're moving too slow. Yeah, the seasons are going to change before we get there. Huh? Sorry. We all got to start running. Oh, man. Faster. Run faster. I'm running as fast as I can. Yeah, sorry, my legs are short. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So basically everyone was running, running towards each other. Almost there. I sure hope Michael and John are okay. Huh, random time for you to be thinking about them. I just have this weird feeling. I miss Wendy. I know, me too. Come on, keep running. Just a little farther. Tink, why are you wasting your energy running? You can fly. I can fly? OMG, for a quick sec I forgot. We're flying now. I can fly. Oh! Sorry. Well, I'll be darned. How is this happening? We're flying? Whoa, this place is crazy. Wendy, is that you? John, do you know these guys? Boss, there you are. We were just coming to see you. Peter, save us. We've been trapped. What? But these guys are my friends. And you guys are my friends. And you guys are my friends. And I know you and you and you. Michael, are you OK? You Ouch! Ugh, my booty! Tink, why'd you do that? Because we all need to keep calm, carry on, talking. How poetic, Tink. I think she means we need to figure out what the heck is going on here. My thoughts exactly. So the groups all explained what the others were doing and how they were trying to arrive at the Green Peace Club at the same time. 
Tiger Lily even excused the Darling Boys for littering, since they were new to Neverland. They didn't know. But now we know, so we won't do it again. They realized they were all on the same side of things and enjoyed the Greenpeace Club together. Aw, that is so nice. They drank some peppermint tea. Mmm, refreshing. I grew the peppermint leaves myself in my garden. They did some yoga. I feel so centered. Whoa, whoa, Oops. They watered some plants. This is an echinacea plant. Good to keep you healthy. Cool. And this is lemon balm. Reduces anxiety. Oh, that's good for me. I'm a little, some might say, high strung. Tiger Lily sang everyone a peaceful song. The bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain. They took a nap under the shade of the trees. Ah, this is the life. Yeah, the sun is shining. Ah, and I'm sleepy. Ooh, not a care in the world. Ah! Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Wendy? Over here, help! Wendy, what happened? I was climbing, and I was stretching, and I was parkouring. And you fell off? Yeah, I think I'm okay. I don't think it's broken. Ouchie! Oh, man, we gotta get you back to the bunker, and fast. You can take my wagon, and Wendy can ride in that. Thanks, Tiger Lily, but I got a better idea. Wendy, hop on. Oh, boy. Let's fly. Wee! Peter, don't drop me! Don't worry, I gotcha. Hey, looks like those stinking pirates are finally leaving the shore. See you later, alligators. Don't taunt them, Tank. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Ah, uh, they can't hear us. Right, pirates? Huh? Did you guys hear that? No, dude, relax. You're always so worried. But... Yeah, just embrace the chill island life. But, but it sounded like a bird, or a plane, or a fairy. But the thing was, the pirates were not leaving the shore. That's right, kids. This wasn't the last time Peter and her buddies would see the pirates. <gasps> huh? Chapter 9, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So the gang was flying fast as lightning toward the home under the ground so they could save Wendy's life. Whoa, 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 that's so dramatic. It's just a busted leg. She'll be fine after the scouts take care of her. Who are you talking to, Peter? Uh, no one. According to my calculations, we are four hairs past a freckle away. Huh? Meaning we're almost there. Good, because my back is starting to ache. Oh, sorry, Peter. Oh, not to worry. Anything for a friend. Aw, that is so nice. And meanwhile, the scouts were looking all over the home under the ground for Peter. Remember, they went back there to get help for the Darling Boys. Where could Pan be? We are really gonna need her help if we are gonna save the Darling Boys. Uh, guys? What if she never comes back? Hello, guys. Oh man, we should start gathering our food and making rations. You, you guys, guys, look. Hey guys, incoming. Oh, my booty. Quick, guys. Wendy needs your help. Oh, no. Mother, you're hurt. We can help you, Mother. Right this way, Mother. We, we got, got you, mother. mother. Oh, oh, my. Thank you. Is she going to be okay? Will your medicine taste nasty like the one our mommy gives us for a cough? Oh, no, Michael. She won't even need any medicine. Yeah, we're going to patch this leg up. Look at his split. I'll get a piece of wood and make a split. And I'll get ribbon to tie it tight. And I'll get a chocolate ice cream sundae. Won't that be a little messy? Oh, John, you silly goose. It's not for her leg, just a little snack. Right. Oh, that makes sense. The scouts made quick work of fixing up Wendy's leg. After some wrapping, stitching, welding, and ice cream eating, Wendy was as good as new. Wow, thanks, guys. I feel like a million bucks. And bonus, I don't know if you scouts realize this, but because of this incident, you all earned your first aid and medicine merit badges. Hey, Wendy, I'll bet you can fly better than ever now. You think? 
I know. Tink, hit her with a little fairy glitter. You got it, dude. Ah, uh, Tink? I, I swear I had another one in here. Another what? Tink, come on, we wanna see Wendy fly. Uh, Pan, I think we have bigger fish to fry. My spare bag of glitter is... Is, is filled with glitter to keep this fun going? Uh, no, it's missing! Where did you find this? Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Guys, it's true. I'm all out of fairy glitter. I'll bet that crooked Captain Hook stole it when we were busy saving Tiger Lily. You're right. Tink, what's wrong? It's her powers and her energy. She's getting weaker by the second. I feel weird. Pan, you gotta do something. She needs her fairy glitter, otherwise she gets really weak. What are we gonna do? Well, there's one thing. If everybody claps, then we'll show her that people still believe in fairies. Of course we believe in fairies. Well, sometimes people lose their faith and Tink needs a little encouragement. Quick, Pan. I'm fading. That is so sad. And all of you out there, if you believe in fairies all together, I need you to clap your hands. Please. Please, for my bestie, clap your hands so Tink can hear you. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt this really important moment, but I just needed to tell you Captain Hook did steal Tinkerbell's fairy glitter. Yup. I stole right from under her nose. Urgh. Captain, that's aggressive. Well, you gotta be aggressive if you want to get your way. I guess. And I want my special glove back from Pan. And I knew if I took that fairy's magical pouch of glitter, Pan would surely come back for it. Peter Pan certainly does seem to be a loyal friend. She's kind of always saving her friends. Ha-ha! I'll use that loyalty to trap her. Oh, boy. Kids, what do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Come on, you guys. Clap, clap. Please. Clap, clap if you believe in fairies. They believe in you, Tink. I believe in magic. See, Tink, everybody loves you. We believe in fairies. Do you believe in magic? Tell me you believe. I believe. I'm feeling stronger and stronger. Clap a little bit more. I'm back, people. Thank you. Yay, I'm so happy. See, people still do believe in magic. Magic is all around us. I love it. But this won't last long. We really gotta get to Hook's ship to get my glitter. We'll stay in the bunker in case Hook shows up here. We'll come with you, Pan. I'm ready to fight for your honor, Tink. <laughs> this better work because this is my last handful of fairy glitter. Let's go! Good luck! The group flew fast as lightning toward the pirate ship. You need to prepare yourself for battle, peeps. Yeah, those pirates are strong, but we're stronger! We can do this! Aha! See that? They're still by the shore. We gotta make a sneak attack. We'll follow your lead, Pan. Okay, shh. We gotta do this very quietly. They better watch out. Look! I see Smee and Bob and the others. What? What are they doing? Are they? Is that nail polish? Spa day. Ah, soft as a rabbit's booty. I love that mint green color. It brings out my eyes. Hold still. I'm trying to clip these toenails. Gross. When is the last time you did this? Mm, nasty. Count us in, Peter. OK, here we go. We pounce on three. Like on three or after you say three? On my count of three. So when you say three? <sighs> ah, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> What's happening? Ooh, this is so exciting. Put up your dukes, me. Uh-oh. This is not going to be good. We won't hurt you if you take us to your leader. 
Oh, the little fairy is scary. You have no idea. I may look tiny, but I'm mighty. I believe you. Just don't hurt me. Dude, you guys are pirates. Aren't you supposed to be a little bit more, like, bloodthirsty or something? Now might not be a good time to say this, but I really don't like being mean. Ugh, where is my bag of fairy glitter? Ha ha ha, I knew this bag of dumb old glitter would lure you back to my ship. Peter Pan can never turn down a chance to help a friend. Ha ha, gotcha. <sighs> he used my kind heart against me. Burst. Pan, give us the word. Charge! Suddenly, Pan and Hook were cornered face to face. Oh no, I hope she's okay. Give us back the fairy glitter. Never! You, you codfish. Then give me back my glove. Huh? My special glove. The one my grandma made me when I was a little boy to protect my hook and do piratey things. Whoa, this got heavy. Um, this glove? Are you kidding me? Sorry, boss. I didn't know this was the glove you were looking for. I've been using it to hold all the fish I catch. Oh, I'll never get that stench out of my glove. Bob! Do you want him to walk the plank, sir? Yes! Plank! 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 plank. plank. Oh, man! Oh, man! Here goes nothing! Well, that was weird. Huh? What? I wasn't gonna let one of me men drown. Just teaching him a little lesson. Let's all go! So, uh, Hook, the fairy glitter? I already snuck it back into Tink's pouch. Huh? Aw, oh, thanks! You know, this has been a lot of fun, but I kind of feel like it's time to go home. Sure, we can head back to the home under the ground. No, Peter. I mean our home, not in Neverland, where our parents are, and Nanny, our own beds. Oh, um, I thought we had more time together. Like, I kind of thought forever. Well, we def can be friends forever. I miss my mommy, too. Aw, that's so sweet. Second star to the right. And straight on till morning. Tell the Scouts thank you for everything. And Tiger Lily and the Greenpeace Club to keep on protecting the land. And tell the mermaids we'll come play bubble ball with them soon. This was a great adventure. I'll miss you, darlings. I really don't like goodbyes, so how about see you later? See, see you, you later. later. Until next time, off to Neverland. Good night, boys. Good, Good night, night, Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> Good morning, my darling darlings. Wendy, are you ready for your math test today? Huh? Wasn't that like months ago? Silly Wendy, of course not. We were just talking about it last night. But haven't we been in Neverland for so long? I'm not quite sure, but something magical definitely happened. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi kids, Miss Booksy here with a Cool School exclusive. Today, I'm going to interview a real witch. <laughs> Super scary, huh? I mean, witches are always flying around on broomsticks and casting spells and being wicked, right? <laughs> well. We'll see. Help me welcome to the stage, the one, the only. Oh, I realized I don't know her real name, so come on out, witch! Hey, how are you? Happy to be here. Hi there. So what is your name? Alfred Boogers. Wow, that's 
Beautiful. So tell me, how did you first become a witch? Were you born a witch? Did you go to a school for wizards and witchcraft? Ooh, do you play Quidditch? I was born into a family of witches. My mother was a witch, my mother's mother was a witch, and my mother's mother's mother was a witch. What about your mother's 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 mother? Was she a witch? No, she was an accountant. Oh. So what was your first spell? I turned the family cat into a chihuahua. What? I'm a dog person. Interesting. I always thought witches like cats. That's just a stereotype. Anyway, my spells got really good when I got my first bubbling cauldron. Ooh, tell me about that. What was the first thing you cooked up in your cauldron? First thing was chili. I make excellent chili, award-winning. Spicy but not too spicy, light on the beans. Oh, okay, but what kind of spells did you first cook up? Oh, right, let's see. Uh, one time I put in the hair of a yeti, the fingernail of a meerkat, one lizard's tongue, a dash of cinnamon, and the eye of a newt. And what did that do? made my entire kindergarten class levitate. You kids get back down here this minute or I'm calling the principal. That sounds fun. Want me to levitate you? Are you serious? Um, yes please. Do you have a bubbling cauldron? I have a crock pot. Eh, it's okay. I can just use my wand. Abracadabra. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> oh, hey, you have some schmutz on your hat. Oh, thanks. Hey. How do I get down? Hocus pocus. Ow! Whew. Sorry about that. The landing is the hottest part. <laughs> so, most people think of witches as wicked villains, but you actually weren't the bad guy in Snow White. Yeah, the evil queen was the villain there. I mean, her name is Evil Queen. What do you expect? Have you ever done anything truly wicked? Hmm. One time I cut the line at Disney World. For which ride? It was the line for the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ooh, that is wicked. But I was such a cute princess. Fair enough, everyone deserves a princess moment. Exactly. Just one more question before you go. Is it annoying when people dress up as witches for Halloween? Not at all, I love it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know. Plus, I blend right in and go trick or treating. Witches love candy, by the way. You can quote me on that. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Wizard of Oz. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey, Farmer Ted. <laughs> He can't hear me, of course. He's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. That is so sad. Yeah, just like that. Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog Toto. <laughs> Hi Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. That's literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy loud sound, it sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? Ah, a flying cow! Dorothy, a cyclone's coming! Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, that. Oh no, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. 
I wonder when we're gonna land. Or where we're gonna land. Oh, oh Toto, I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Wow. Okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that? A kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? No way! I wouldn't even squish a fly! Ask Toto. But you did squish her. Or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise! Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful. She was the worst. Are you a munchkin? No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? A, a witch? Oh, no. But you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch. Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah, ah. Where? Not here, sillies. The last wicked witch rules over the west. And she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone. Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst. No, no. See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears. Poof, like magic. Yay! The munchkins love magic. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, check this out. Ah! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, It was only a trick. I thought you liked magic tricks. Magic's supposed to be nice. That was scary. Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me? No, <laughs> there are no witches in Kansas. <laughs> But you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. <laughs> my house did the flying, but I can't fly. <laughs> I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway, how do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope, guess you'll just have to stay. Yay, you can be our queen. All hail queen, what's your name? Dorothy? All, All hail, hail queen, queen Dorothy. Dorothy. Hooray, yeah. hurrah. <laughs> What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. Oh, All hail, hail the queen. queen Dorothy. Our queen. But Dorothy didn't want to be queen. She just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in, wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up. Quick, someone tell a joke. Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house. <laughs> what, too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? I just flew in from Kansas, and boy, my house is tired. <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird, next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives, and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? 
I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy. I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch, and they're also way too big for our Munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Yay, magic to the rescue. Well, they are super comfy and they do match my dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the Munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> hey, you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. Ugh, ah! get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. Uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard? I bet he has brains. Yes, and he's going to help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing. <laughs> oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a break. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 3, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles, and finally, Ew! I'm pooped! Let's just sit down and rest for a while. Okay. Wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something? I'm never hungry. And that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home and there's no place like home. Oh, so cute. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The Munchkins were very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Wow. But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn and crows. Ah! Yikes, ah! crows. Luckily I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet. So the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. 
When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all those crows, so I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. That's so sad. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. Then you came along. And now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine, until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think I hear it again. <laughs> Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never! <laughs> Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Wow, this is so fun. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life, too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa! Are you a witch? No. Why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the great Oz? I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad. I think. It is sad. Enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go! Wait! Oil can! Good call. Okay, now to the wizard we go. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on! Chapter 4, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, look, 475 schmiles to Emerald City. I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in schmiles in Oz. How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I. But maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope. I used to have both. And believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness, and happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> okay. I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the wicked witch and paid her to curse me. A curse? Oh no. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me, and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. <coughs> the tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me. And without a heart, I couldn't feel love. 
I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story. I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the City of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more schmiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The Scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the Good Witch and the Magic Slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? Oh, Whew, that was a close one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know, I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Oh, scarecrow, that sounds scary. See, I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know. I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait, you're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. I'll protect you. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait. <laughs> We're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> what are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. What do you think is going to happen next? The Wizard of Oz. Chapter 5. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage. And that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Oh, now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a Freddy cat. You can do it, don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But you're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Wow, this is so fun. Woohoo, you did it. I knew you could. <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Oh, great work. <laughs> Now let's go meet the wizard. The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Nope, nope, not okay. What is that? Kalitas. What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so. <laughs> Kalitas have the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. Oh my, uh, that is scary. Told ya! Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Uh 
Okay, steady now. The Kalidas are coming. Oh, yay, we all made it. Kalidas! Ah! I've got it. Tin Man, chop this side of the tree. That was close. Great job, Tinny. <laughs> hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea. You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Dress straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz, even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh good, I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? Okay, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to paddle toward the other shore. There she is! The brat who squished my sister! It's payback time, sweetheart! <sighs> Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no, we're floating away from the yellow brick road. And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West, the scariest witch of all. The witch? Oh no. What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim, I'll fall apart. And I'll rest. Paddle harder. They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail and I'll pull you to shore. <laughs> ah, there's a fish! It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me! Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. <gasps> there he is. Shoo, Arr! go away. Whew, that was a close one. Dorothy, you came back. Of course, we're here to save you. Okay, yeah, um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft. Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. Ah, big stork. Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the Scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no, incoming! Oh shush, I'm here to save ya. Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much. <laughs> no prob. Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West. She's a tough nut. We will. See ya. <laughs> well, gang, shall we? Yup. I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Ooh, poppies. They're so pretty. <laughs> yes, they are. 
and just wait until you smell them. The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beasts fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless! I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy foist. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. <sighs> That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for Mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Meow. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha, they're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic. And my flying monkeys. The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys. Sup, boss? Take this girl to my castle. Aye, aye. <laughs> How is Dorothy going to get home now? Sleep tight, boys. When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone. And the sapphire slippers will be mine. All mine. <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off and Dorothy woke up. Ah! This frightened the monkeys. Ah! And they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. Ugh. Ow! Oh, okay, that was scary. But look, I'm back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second. These shoes are supposed to be magical. And the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did, down here. That is amazing. Oh, hi. <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here, we'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch. <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. 
And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. Okay, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful! Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. I hope they'll be okay. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the good witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But, you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next. Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. That is so sad. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the Wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not going to do it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West! Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids. This does not look good. What do you think is gonna happen next? Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin. The Scarecrow pulled into pieces and the lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the witch's castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry, kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely gonna try to take those. The witch? Oh no. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. 
don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, get me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Geez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? <gasps> the witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the wicked witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dare tried to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Give me! No, you give me! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! another mess. You make me clean all day anyway. Not that. I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it. Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking... Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. Wow, this is so fun. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh? huh? I'll explain later, too. Let's go see the wizard. Oh, yeah. Now he'll grant our wishes. Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The scarecrow would get his brains. The tin man would get his heart. The cowardly lion would get his courage. And Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her. Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter 10, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard and well, here we are. So, you're not a wizard. So, you don't have any power? Um, no, not at all. Then we came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. That is so sad. And they set off to find the lion. 
The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalinas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the tin man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the tin man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalita's. The scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. That is amazing. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Yay, magic to the rescue. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later, but now we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... I was thinking, I do that now. Yes, the Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the Sapphire Slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes, it's quite simple. Take three steps in the sapphire shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home. What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait, you have to say goodbye first. Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't. You'll rust. Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. Be nice, Toto. Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh, I wonder where Auntie M and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. We'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, Take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye.